In 1992, a five-day conference at the prestigious Massachusetts Institute of Technology brought together the leading experts in the field of unidentified flying objects and alien abduction. A respected journalist and author, in fact, you know this man's work, C.D.B. Bryan, attended the conference, and his findings have been published in his new book, Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind, Alien Abductions, UFOs, and the Conference at MIT. He joins me now, and thank you for coming in. You know, I, I mentioned people know your, your work. You've written Friendly Fire. You're a distinguished writer for some of the finest publications in this country. Of all the things to attract your attention, why the conference on abductions and UFOs at MIT? I think it's my age. <laughs> I've done so many different things. It's impossible not to be drawn to a subject in which, as you mentioned, MIT is a site of a conference on little green men. And it's being <laughs> chaired by a Pulitzer Prize winning Harvard psychiatrist, a Broida Prize winning physicist from, from MIT, that high church of technology. Right. Thing. So it was a good tongue-in-cheek piece to do for The New Yorker, and they sent me up to do exactly that. A tongue-in-cheek piece for The New Yorker. And what I found instead was what I think of as an authentic mystery. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had any close encounters of any kind? Seen a flying saucer, apparitions, anything Alas, like that? Alas, no. Oh, all right, Because I could have used an ending. <laughs> <laughs> so then you went with healthy skepticism yeah, and yeah. curiosity. What kind of people did you find there? I think I can summarize it best as during the first coffee break, when here we are in this room with the physicists, the astronomers, the therapists, and whatnot, and the abductees, I couldn't tell them apart. I thought that the uh, abductees would look in some way, to use a medical term, cuckoo. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a little antenna off their heads. But they, they don't. Weren't. They are simply, for the most part, entirely credible people telling entirely incredible stories. Have you read these books or heard of these books by Whitley Strieber? Uh, communion? I have read Communion and Transformation. Right. I think so it's then, the second one. And, and were any of the stories that you heard at MIT in any way similar to the experiences he recount, recounts in, uh, in uh, uh, the two books that you mentioned? I think communion. very much so. That, that Whitley's uh, abduction scenario is almost identical to the scenario of the thousands of people in this country and all over the world who, who have said and who thoroughly believe they've been abducted. So then there was a common thread that ran through the stories that you heard there. I, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. And what scared these people? You, you know, uh, Streber talks of being frightened the first time. Uh, what were these people frightened? Uh, obviously, when they, if they were abdu abducted or encountered by aliens, they would be frightened. Mm -hmm. But but they were frightened for reasons other than that. I think that I think the two things that frightened them was that people were taking this story seriously. Uh, the two women I spent the most time with at the conference, Carol and Alice, who I, who I wrote about, I had been drawn to as a journalist because they had been the least contaminated by UFO stories. They had not read any of Whitley Strieber's books. They had never attended a conference before. They had seen Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind, thought it great entertainment, but had no interest in UFOs until suddenly these things started happening to them. And their ambivalence at the conference is sort of what you were asking about, which is, A, they were very gratified to be with a group of people who did not think they were crazy, who shared the experiences that they had gone through, and B, it scared the hell out of them yeah. to be with people who had shared their experiences, because that meant that their experiences might be true. And then these folks were all given some kind of psychological test, weren't they, too? Well, not at the conference. A great many people have been given tests. I'd, I'd say close to 300 of these abductees have been given everything from the Minnesota multifacic inventory, which, in effect, tests whether or not you're lying, to the Rorschach, the, uh, what is it, suggestibility, fantasy-prone, and, and indeed polygraph tests. And they come out smelling like a rose. And did they bring any photographs, any evidence, any proof? No. See, that's, that's the elusive quality of this phenomenon. It's like holding a soap bubble. One of the Harvard astronomers at the conference complained that he would never believe in UFOs until a cigarette lighter or a tailpipe dropped for a moment. John Mack then said, of course, they gave up smoking 100,000 years ago. But there is no real hard evidence. Yeah. It would be nice if they did drop something. But, but you've, we've all seen the photographs, Tom. I mean, UFO photographs yeah, are yeah. all over the place. And we've also seen Tom Hanks in the White House with John F. Kennedy. So, I mean, we know that any photograph can be faked. There are the uh, crop circles interesting in that there are isotopic changes 
in the soil, the kind of thing where if you were jumping up and down on a lump of coal and turn it into a diamond, you, you can't get there from here. And there are those changes, and there are changes in the soil. What, what, I, I'm sure that the occupations of these people who were at this conference run the gamut of occupations, from skilled to unskilled, blue collar, white collar, you know, management, non-management, uh, union uh, uh, management, right? right. Uh, you, you would think that if people from all walks of life have had a sighting or have had an encounter or an abduction of some kind, wouldn't you think it might have happened to one of the people, the thousands of people who have served in the Congress of the United States, or the hundreds of thousands of people who serve in governments all over the world? Somebody, like if, if John Major went to Parliament and says, by the way, I got picked up by a UFO last night. Now we'd say, you know, this guy, you know, we can trust him. But what makes you think it hasn't happened to these people? Would you, if you were John Major and had been abducted, <laughs> would you come forward? Right? Or Walter Cronkite. All right, well, take the great Bud Hopkins story of the woman Linda Cortile. Let me, let, me, right? let me interrupt you for a All second right? for a commercial and then that story, and I want to know some of the things that happened at MIT. C.D. B. Bryan is the author. The book is called Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind. We will continue after these messages. If you didn't send the money Western Union, did you really send the money? Just tell them to wait. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. No, I didn't send the money Western Union, but I figured, what's the difference? Six of one. If you didn't send the money Western Union, did you really send the money? Sorry it didn't get there, but I wouldn't worry. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Take the heat out of shaving with new Old Spice Soothing Gel. It'll cool the burn, soothe your skin, it'll make your face feel great. Or call 1-800-PROVE-IT for a full refund. So try new Soothing Gel, because now you've got proof. Guaranteed. Freshen your car with Glade Clip-Ons. Clip on here, clip on there. Clip on freshness everywhere. Now with more freshening power. Clip on freshness everywhere. Glade Clip-Ons, fresh from Glade. With the Vortec engine in a Chevy S-Series, you can go around the world four times before you have to stop for a tune-up. Have a nice trip. Chevy trucks like a rock. This season, HBO confronts today's major issues, like corporate takeovers. You just lie no. back and let me be the boss. Water conservation. The blood shortage. And, of course, politics. I gotta pay. Stay in with HBO, with movies that are so exciting, compelling, and charming, it's the intelligent thing to do. <laughs> HBO, simply the best. Let's face it, fire's the only way to cook a burger. It's true. Like you're stranded on a desert island. What do you want with you, a frying pan or a hibachi? You gotta go hibachi. It's no contest. The great tasting flame broiled Whopper, just $2.99 with fries and a drink at Burger King. It's fall, the season of change, so we changed our prices. It's Sears Days, and if it's Craftsman, it's on sale, all of it. So is all paint. Get to Sears Days and get many of our lowest prices of the season before the season changes. His visit thrilled millions. His presence uplifted our spirits. And no one brought you closer to the Pope's visit than Channel 2 News. I had tears in my eyes, I gotta tell you. Now by calling 1-800-494-6007, you can bring home his message of peace with our exclusive home video. Channel 2 News presents the Pope's visit for only $19.98 plus shipping and handling. Hold on to this historic visit forever. Something I will never forget for the rest of my life. 